Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. The idea in the back of the head is the reserve currency status um, and just a, a change in the U.S. Treasury holdings is by virtue um, very bad. If it happens very fast on some type of risk problem, um, risk coming into the U.S. Treasuries because of the U.S. government's irresponsibility, it's very, very bad. Um, and then you see that what we what I talked about earlier, that triple whammy of creating the dollar crisis, the Treasuries would be the first driver. Um, and then, obviously, the, the dollar would be going south as the treasuries are being sold, and I think you'd see kind of a general move out of the U.S. economy. But it doesn't have to be that way in that if we get a global rebalancing and the U.S. savings rate actually increases to 10% of GDP, uh, which is about, right now, that would be about $1.4 trillion um, of domestic reserves created by the U.S. savings rates go, going up that high, which historically is where they were, if we get back to that situation, um, and we create, instead of creating zero domestically in terms of U.S. savings, up to $1.4, $1.5, $2 trillion as the U.S. economy grows, we're in effect displacing those reserves that are held um, overseas that we're so worried about. But again, this has to be a slow natural transition and part of this global rebalancing. And if it is, um, it would come hand in hand with a change of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Asian market, the structure of the Asian market. And again, not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. If China and Japan, you know, no longer need to hold treasuries, it also means that they're not going to have a need to suppress their currency. Now, Japan hasn't been doing that, but of late, China, of course, has. Other Asian bloc countries have in order to compete with China on trade. But if China says all of a sudden we, we do let our currency start to go up in value um, because it actually helps the domestic market to have a stronger currency, we're not so export dependent, then you have a higher currency in China used by consumers that can import cheaper goods from the West. So that the so that idea that at some point when China stops buying treasuries or starts to reduce treasury holdings isn't going necessarily going to be a disaster scenario if we have this rebalancing in play. So, so there's two parts to this treasury question that you have to keep in mind. In general, this idea of uh, muddling through uh, on the U.S. side. Um, in the implicit weak dollar policy just means we have a resumption of the long-term bear market in the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar goes back down on the U.S. dollar index to 70, and maybe more if we get into a crisis scenario um, where it gets in trouble. And if this is the case, and it is an implicit weak dollar policy, which definitely looks like in play, you know, we're juicing the, the, the asset markets around the world, and those are juicing the commodity markets. There's no reason the Asian, uh, the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar can't continue to rally uh, in here. Now, to us, the Australian dollar looks very, very extended, but it's a momentum trade in here. Every time it pulls back a bit, it looks like we're going to get a decent playable correction. The Aussie turns and just shoots up. Um, did it today. Didn't make a new high today, Australian dollar. Very, very close. Uh, has not after hours at the moment. Um, Canadian dollar is lagging. New Zealand dollar made a new high today, and the other commodity currencies um, in the developed world continue to rally. And if and if, and if we are in this muddle through, if we are in an implicit weak dollar policy, and this wall of money keeps flowing offshore, um, and, and we continue to see some positive signs of growth just a little bit in terms of exports in the U.S. consumer doing a little bit less badly, um, this trend um, really could run. To us, the real play longer term um, through, a, through a, a weakening dollar policy, and even if the dollar uh, on a growth standpoint, the emerging market currencies we like for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, if there's a risk bid, the emerging market currencies would get hit. But from a valuation standpoint, long term, if the growth continues and the capital gains opportunities continue offshore, some of the Asian currencies, not just the Chinese currency, which is, which is not playable really, it's a pegged currency, but the others, 20, 30, 40, even 50 percent undervaluations against the U.S. dollar um, and the euro, especially the euro here, probably even more against the euro given the rally in the euro. But long term, that whole Asian bloc, if they create a consumer market, is the place to be for low leverage, long term trend trades. Um, and 
I think as the ISC gets more and more depth um, and more and more volume into their FX options, you're going to see more of these emerging market currencies come into play. Right now they have Mexico, which be, can be you can go out as long as 10 months on these. So it's something to consider if you think this is going to continue. The other part is the growth surprise, and this is the um, idea that the really rebounds, and I explained it earlier, a heck of a lot faster than Europe, which is an open question now. Um, Europe has actually been healing um, at, a, at a much better rate than we expected. So it's still, a, it's still an open question whether or not we get any type of growth surprise if the U.S. doesn't come out of this uh, morass faster than Europe. I'd have to say in terms of scenarios, uh, the we implicit weak dollar policy is in play, number one. Um, this is number two. We, we're not buying yet into a dollar crisis, but we're watching the Treasuries very closely as a trigger. You've heard this idea the U.S. is going to be the carry trade currency because its interest rates are now lower than Japan and Switzerland. makes a very good point. But if you look at the U.S. Treasuries on a real yield basis, they're actually fairly high compared to its competitors. So there's real value you know, buying the U.S. Treasuries with cheap dollars uh, in here. Uh, given where they are, meaning real yield, meaning if you take the nominal yield in the U.S. Treasuries and you add back in the what would be the you know the the negative inflation rate in the U.S., the real yield in the U.S. Treasuries is still very good, and we're still, despite everything and despite all the, all the Treasuries being created, we're still seeing strong demand for U.S. Treasuries and even international demand. When that changes, then we have to worry uh, in a very very big way. So if we see a growth surprise in the U.S., I think you know that's the time, and, and we'll probably start to see the dollar lead that um, and, and discount that to a degree, because when you look at the euro, it's probably it's in, at the level it's in now. It's probably close to 25 to 30 percent overvalued on the purchasing power parity basis against the U.S. dollar. We also have to believe if we see the U.S. dollar start to rally. Um, the European governments will not be unhappy to see that because they're getting squeezed. When you think about Germany as a major export power, their currency is so high, the euro, relative to the U.S. dollar and the Chinese currency, which is pegged to the U.S. dollar. So when the U.S. dollar goes down, Chinese currency goes down. So Germany has to compete against these two major blocks with a very, very high currency um, in terms of trade. So once this move starts, um, I'm sure it's not going to be uh, – you know, something that the European governments are going to be worried about and are very happy to see and would definitely be a self-feeding type of move, especially now since the sentiment is so bad against the U.S. dollar. So we continue to watch this, but really at the moment we haven't seen any strong sign that the U.S. economy um, is going to blow past, the, you know, Europe, but it's definitely in play. And here's a shot of the, the euro uh, currency on a weekly basis. Euro made another new high today. Um, trading at right around 148 at the moment. Uh, its all-time high was 160. Uh, and so it's made a, a real power move here. It's gotten past that that high that it made. It went back to 147, broke just broke above that, and um, there's little resistance left on the chart here on the high side. So this idea of the U.S. in an implicit weak dollar policy, if it falls down, there, you know, as as much as from a fundamental and technical situation, the euro looks extended. It can run on a momentum trade, um, and it's something that, uh, unfortunately, I've missed trying to be too cute with my uh, fundamental analysis and too cute with my technical analysis. And this is what happens in currency markets. They extend, they extend, they overshoot in a very, very big way um, towards the end of the trend. Uh, unfortunately, we just don't know when it's going to end. Um, so the play is... Uh, go with the flow and don't get in front of the steamroller. I keep saying that to myself, but I keep getting in front of the steamroller. Um, anyway, those are the scenarios. I'll take some questions now. Uh, this is additional information on us. Um, and Actually, we do have some more on the ISC. Hey, Lynette, do you want to cover that? I just want to show this. This is uh, upcoming seminars. I'll go through it, Elena. Hi, sorry, I I just uh, wasn't able to get the okay. uh, I'll, I'll switch it over this. quick enough. But um, but yes, feel free to uh, to go through it. Uh, Jack's webinar is going to be archived and available on isc.com and on fxoptions.com, and so make sure to to look out for it. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.